So you recently got into cycling and you want to continue using your bike through the cold, wet and dark months of winter, whilst remaining warm, comfortable and crucially safe doing so. Here's a load of things to know, to buy and to do to keep your winter riding not only bearable, but actually enjoyable. key to staying warm and dry on your bike is layering. This is true all year round, but it's particularly applicable in the winter. The idea of having lots of thinner layers of clothing rather than, say, one big heavy coat is that it offers you much more flexible options. If when you start your ride it's freezing cold, you've got all your layers on, and as your ride progresses, perhaps it warms up and you're able to take one of your thinner layers off. In terms of the layers that you might wear, you'd classically start with a base layer, which is the layer closest to your skin. Classically, a base layer should be thin, light, and quick drying so that it's able to wick away moisture and sweat from your body. Now just for day to day people often wear cotton such as this t-shirt here but that is actually classically really not a great base layer option. It's really bad if it gets wet, it's really slow at drying and actually it will just make you colder on your ride. Cycling base layers are often made of merino wool or some kind of synthetic vegan alternative. So an example of a base layer could be this short sleeve one that I got from DHB which I think was about £15. On top of your base layer you might then have some kind of warmer mid layer. For me a mid layer should always have a zip just because it allows for really quick and easy adjustment of temperature. An example mid layer could just be a fleece with a little zip down top. This specific one is from Haglofts and I got it just off eBay. And then depending on the temperature or the weather you'd have some kind of outer layer. So this might be a waterproof layer, a windproof layer or just a thicker warmer coat. I personally really like this Adidas Terex coat which I find has worked really well for me over the past couple of years. The key really is just to give yourself options so that you can add or subtract layers depending on the conditions. And also it's better if these layers are a bit thinner so that if you do need to store them away they can fit in a pocket or maybe in a backpack. The temptation might be just to put on your warmest, heaviest jacket that you own, but actually if this causes you to sweat throughout the ride it's actually going to have the opposite effect and you're going to get colder. In combination with layering, there are a few key accessories and pieces of kit which will make your riding much more comfortable and enjoyable. Probably my favourite bit of cycling kit is a buff. Sometimes called a snood or a gaiter, it's a kind of scarf that you can tuck into your top and also pull up over your face when it's particularly cold. You can get super thin ones like this Albion buff here or slightly thicker ones like this Patagonia one that I also own. It's just a really flexible piece of kit that keeps the chill off your neck, stops the wind getting into your top and also can just keep your face warm if it's particularly cold. And because it's so small, if actually you realise you don't need it, you can pop it into a pocket. Or if you're not sure if you're going to need it that day, just carry it with you. And if you do, there it is. For me, the next thing I always recommend is either some kind of hat that fits into your helmet or a headband. But for me, the crucial thing for this piece of kit is that it covers your ears. In the winter months, if it's raining or if it's just windy, your ears are kind of super exposed. And for me, my ears can get quite painful if they're too cold. So just a super thin headband that just covers your ears can just stop that. This headband is from Castelli and I think it cost me like five pounds from somewhere like Wiggle. And this hat, which is so thin that it can very easily fit under your helmet, is from a brand called Black Diamond. I think I bought it from the website Ultralight Outdoor Gear. I think this is 25 grams. It stows away into almost literally nothing and I think it was less than 20 pounds. Again, really versatile, really lightweight and just a useful piece of kit to carry around with you. It will come as absolutely no surprise that I'm going to recommend a pair of gloves, but there may be a few things about cycling gloves that are a little bit surprising. For example, in cycling it's actually quite common to layer two pairs of gloves so you might have a thin liner layer that goes onto your skin and then you might have a heavier possibly waterproof or possibly windproof layer that on the coldest days you wear both pairs of gloves at the same time what you might also want to consider when buying gloves for winter is that the thumb is made from quite a soft material and to be honest this is so that you can wipe your nose mid-ride and you also want a pair of gloves that's got a long enough wrist area so that when you've got it on it kind of covers under your cuffs of your jacket your feet is an area of body that's quite exposed when you're cycling to the wind and to the rain so socks are going to be a really important consideration as well you can get specific winter cycling socks or you can also just get kind of warm pair like the heat tech range at uniqlo and you might also see cyclists wearing overshoes which are kind of an insulating or waterproof layer that you actually wear on the outside of your shoes so you might want to consider that as well you also might want to think about some kind of cycling goggles or glasses whether it's raining whilst you're riding or the roads are wet and you're getting spray from the roads, you don't really want to be constantly getting water in your eyes because it can affect your visibility. You don't have to wear cycling specific glasses, but the ones I own are from Sun God and they are cycling specific. But obviously you maybe don't want to wear sunglasses just because of the low light conditions generally in the winter. 
well as staying warm from the cold on your ride, you're also going to want to stay dry from the rain. So waterproofing is a really important consideration as well. You might want to consider buying a waterproof pair of shoes, which surprisingly don't always have to look absolutely awful. These are a pair of Adidas Terex, which I think still look relatively human. These are walking shoes rather than cycling specific shoes, but they still got a relatively stiff sole and they're not too wide, so they're not going to catch on your bike when you're pedaling. In the winter, even when the forecast is completely dry, I always recommend people carry with them a rain cape. A rain cape is just a really lightweight, small, waterproof jacket that can fit really easily in your bag, but you can throw on if the heavens do open. Worth noting that rain capes aren't the most waterproof jacket. If you know it's going to rain your whole ride, then do put on a properly heavy duty waterproof coat. But it's a really good option if you need to stop on the side of the road and just want an extra little layer. Or if you get some unexpected rain on your ride, you can just pop your rain cape out of your pocket and just throw it on. This is a DHB rain cape from Wiggle. It wasn't too expensive. It packs down really small, so it's easily going to fit in a pocket or in your bag. It's just worth carrying with you, even if the forecast is dry. And if it's really tipping it down, or if you commute every day, you might want to consider investing in a waterproof pair of trousers. Waterproof trousers aren't necessarily going to be the most comfortable. They might cause you to get a bit sweaty underneath them. But if you need to get from home to the office and it's proper tipping it down, it's probably a decent option to consider. And finally, whether it's recently rained or it's raining currently, your tyres are going to spray up loads of wet from the road. So you want a pair of mud guards on there. You can get full mud guards that fit the entirety of your wheel, or you can get very small little ass savers that just cover you from the worst of the spray. But it might actually be surprising the amount of wet you get just from the roads, even if it's not actually currently raining. Like I said, this video isn't just things to buy, it's also things to know. And one really important thing to know that I didn't know as a beginner cyclist is that the roads are in much worse condition in the winter than they are the summer. So for example, in the winter, there are far more potholes in the roads. So you need to be a lot more aware of potential hazards as you're riding. You're also at much higher risk of getting a puncture in the winter, which I found quite surprising as a beginner rider because the rain washes in all of the stones and the glass from the edge of the road into the middle of the road. You'll also be contending with greasy surfaces, slippery drain covers and leaves which can be pretty deadly as well. There are a few things you can do to protect yourself from that. Firstly, you might want to buy a pair of tyres that have got more puncture protection. So tyres sometimes have a little plastic or thicker rubbery layer that protects you from glass and other hazards that might cause you a puncture. You also might want to consider whether the tyres you're riding are wide enough. Thin tyres are faster, but they're also less grippy in the wet or the ice. And then you also might want to reduce your tyre pressure in the winter months. So if your tyres have got less pressure, they're softer and you've got a greater surface area touching the road. And you probably also want to accept you are just going to get a puncher at some point. So it's really important that you're carrying a puncher repair kit or a spare inner tube and also, of course, a pump. And if you've not yet learned how to take your tyre off, your inner tube out and to repair a puncture, now won't be the time to do it. And in the winter months, it's obviously really important to remember that the days are shorter and darker and you want to make sure that you're visible to cars, drivers and other road users. In terms of visibility on the bike, there's a few things to consider and one of those obviously is lights. You want a white light on the front of your bike and you want a red light on the back of your bike. One really important thing to note with bike lights is that some lights are there so that you're seen by others, whereas other bike lights are there so that you can see where you're going. So this small and cheap light that I got from Halfords, which I think was less than £10, is fine if all you need to do is be seen by cars on the road. Whereas this cat eye light is much bigger, much heavier, it's got a much bigger battery life and it's going to illuminate the road much more so that you can see actually where you're going. Then another consideration is how visible is the clothing that you're wearing. Whether that be a really bright colour like this rain cape here or just clothing that's got little reflective strips on that will bounce car lights off. Or this helmet from Planet X which is covered in an entirely reflective, almost glittery surface that properly brights up when a car headlight hits it. Another thing worth bearing in mind with winter cycling is that your bike maintenance might just have to step up a level. In the winter in the UK, we obviously often salt and grit our roads to give them more grit, but that salt and grit is going to work its way into your bike, on your chain, all on your frame, and it's just going to corrode and wear your parts faster than it would do in the summer. You're probably going to want to give your bike a properly thorough clean after every few rides, and after every ride, I'd recommend giving it a wipe down with something like GD85 or WD40. Something that I had absolutely no idea about when I started cycling was taking care of your chain and making sure that it's well lubricated. Now, you can actually get chain lubricant that is specifically for dry situations and you can also get chain lube that is specifically for wet situations. In the winter months this dry chain lube is just going to get washed off with all that rain and you're going to be riding around with a completely unlubricated chain. That's going to make an annoying squeaking sound and it's also going to rust a lot quicker. So there you go, there's a load of things you need to know, need to do and need to buy to keep your winter riding enjoyable and safe. So if you're a more experienced cyclist I'd really appreciate it if you could comment below any tips that you might have for beginners on how to get through the winter months. So I'm not sponsored, obviously this video is not an advert or anything like that 
I will leave some links below to some of the products I've shown in this video in case you want to buy any of them. If you found this useful or you enjoyed it, please do hit the like button. And if you're into cycling videos, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Cheers. You're not very visible in the winter months, are you, buddy?